Hello. Uh, this is an add-on to this to uh, the uh, video I did on uh, performance curves. We're going to discuss um, how does a pump actually produce pressure. I mean, I'm talking about a centrifugal pump. So let's go to my uh, website www.pumpfundamentals.com, and in the tutorial section, we'll go to pump system tutorial. Uh, yes, thank you. And uh, we're going to scroll down um, to, I think it's going to be, yes, tutorial uh, number two. Voila. Add. We'll be um, at the place that I want to be. I think. Here we go. Right here we go. Thank you. So, a pump, a centrifugal pump, consists of a rotating impeller. The liquid comes in at uh, 90 degrees to the pump. It enters the impeller, impeller I, which is right here. So these are two different views of the same thing. One's a bit more realistic, if you want. And uh, comes in here, and then it comes in onto the impeller blade, and then changes direction is now on being forced by the impeller blade the liquid is now being forced through these this cavity of these two blades and pushed out radially into the casing and then out to the discharge so you can see that here also we're coming right in here now this is a closed impeller so we have a face here so that the liquid is constrained in this uh, little area here between two impeller blades. So the liquid's coming in, turns direction, is now being rotated radially and at high speed, comes into the casing. Now the casing has a bigger volume, so the pressure, the velocity drops, pressure increases, and it goes out to the system. Now, we've, we've seen... Um, well, an analogy to that uh, situation is, uh, you probably all tried this, maybe tried this when you were kids, is spinning a bucket uh, um, around and, and being amazed that the water's not coming out. So that's kind of cool. And it's a similar uh, situation that's occurring. If you spin this, uh, this jar, this bucket, you're going to see that. And I, and I made a little hole here because I've actually done this in the courses that, I've been, uh, that I did over the years uh, to different, uh, uh, you know, different industries. And uh, anyways, I organized courses talking, uh, to talk about pump, system, uh, pump systems. And uh, you'll see that you get a spray. If I may, if you made a, if I made a small hole at the bottom of this thing, and as I were told, you get a nice spray. And the faster you turn, the uh, the more spray you got. So that basically means that the the amount of pressure produced uh, at the bottom of this container was related to the speed of rotation. So it's a similar situation that's happening uh, with a centrifugal pump. Now. There's a curious thing. This, this is a typical centrifugal pump curve here. As you can see, at zero flow, we have fairly high head, or pressure if you prefer. And at the top, at the maximum flow, we have less. Now, that seems a little bit contradictory. Uh, why, why would we have less flow at high pressure and low flow uh, and... Uh, and, and uh, sorry, why would we have high pressure at low flow and uh, low pressure at high flow. Seems that should be the reverse, right? Well, I think you'll, you can, you'll understand what's happening uh, in a second. If, uh, if I'm operating the pump, let's say at this point here, at a given flow rate, and a, uh, that, that, that will require a certain amount of head or pressure here, if I decide to, let's say, close the discharge valve, what's going to happen? Well, the liquid now doesn't have any other place to go uh, because only a portion of it now is going out the discharge. So there, there's going to be less liquid coming out. We're, we'll be producing more pressure within the casing because there's no there's no way for all of it to go out. So that drop in velocity that we get 
uh, in the casing when all that liquid goes out doesn't occur as much so therefore the pressure stays a little higher so the more I'm the more I close that valve until I get to the point where I've closed it completely well there's no place for the liquid to go at all it's that the, uh, the, the the impeller keeps rotating at the same speed so it's going to create the maximum pressure it can uh, at that speed and it's just going to run around in the, like a cat in a like a rat in a cage and uh, produce whatever pressure will correspond to that speed and of course the reverse happens as I start opening the valve and um, get to uh, you know the, my normal operating point or if I can open the valve still I'm, I'm going to reach the up uh, the end end point of production of uh, that particular point pump for its given speed impeller size and what have you so um, that's why uh, when you when you have less flow you're going to have a higher pressure because the impeller just keeps running at the same speed and it doesn't know what to do with that water it just creates high pressure now it is true that if um, I'm talking about a system now where I haven't changed anything except maybe open or close a valve right so there's nothing that has been changed in the characteristics of that system if I was to all of a sudden decide well I, oh, I want more consumers or I want this pipe to be longer from because my consumers farther away then yes I will need higher pressure to satisfy those conditions how will I get higher pressure well the only way I'll be able to get higher pressure is if I change the impeller make a get, get a pump with a just put a bigger impeller in that pump if that's possible or turn that impeller faster with a, a faster motor for example or if there's a variable speed drive just increase the speed of the motor and then yes then I will need higher pressure to uh, get the, re the required results uh, from that system which is a different system now so we have to be careful what we're talking about we can only do so much with an existing system but if if we change that system fundamentally by adding uh, more consumers or putting them further away then of course that's going to impact the ability of the pump to produce uh, to meet those requirements so I hope that's helped uh, uh, answer the question of why why did, why does pressure uh, go up when the pump uh, flow goes down and uh, if you have any comments well feel free and uh, that's it for now thank you outside of a dog a book is a man's best friend inside of a dog it's too dark to read Groucho Marx <laughs> an engineer a physicist a mathematician and a mystic were asked to name their greatest invention of all times the engineer chose fire which gave humanity power over matter. The physicists choose the wheel, which gave humanity the power over space. The mathematician choose the alphabet, which gave humanity power over symbols. The mystic choose the thermos bottle. Why a thermos bottle? The others asked. Because the thermos bottle keeps hot liquids hot in winter and cold liquids cold in summer. Yeah, so what? Think about it, said the mystic reverently. That little bottle, how does it know? <laughs>